So you bought a fish for dinner, and as you're cleaning the fish, you see this organism in its mouth. Pretty freaky, right? Well, this is what happened to my family friend, Dr. Sai, who then gave me the organism to study. This is the fish tongue parasite, Cymothoa exigua, and it is famous throughout the scientific community as the parasite that replaces a fish's tongue. This is the only known case of a parasite actually replacing the organ that it has destroyed in its host. That is marine biologist Dr. Richard Bruska, and he has been studying parasitic isopods for 40 years. Cymothoa exigua is a fish parasite that lives in the eastern Pacific. It is an isopod. Isopods are an order of crustacean such as lobster or shrimp. Cymothoa exigua is actually a hermaphrodite, which means it has both male and female sexual history. This becomes important when we study how the parasite actually enters a fish and eventually replaces its tongue. Let's take a look at a fish right now. When the parasite first finds the host as a juvenile, it swims under the gill operculum and attaches to the gills. And at that point, it matures into a functional male. But later in time, it switches sex and becomes a female and crawls up into the mouth of the host fish and attaches to the tongue. So the males start right here, taking blood from the gills, and then they switch sex, become females, and take blood from the tongue. This parasite is known for parasitizing around eight different species of fish. However, in one species of fish, the roe snapper, it does something unique. It destroys the tongue of the host fish and then replaces the tongue of the host fish. The isopod attaches itself to the stub of the remaining tongue, just a little muscular cartilage on the base of the mouth. It attaches itself with its hind legs and then that little tongue stub moves the isopod up and down, moves the parasite up and down in the mouth of the host fish, just like it would move its tongue if it had a tongue. This allows the host fish to continue feeding. Almost just as interesting as the parasite's ability to replace a fish's tongue is the way it reproduces. In some species of Cymothoa, mating takes place in the gill chamber of the fish. In other species, mating takes place in the mouth of the fish. They hold the young, not inside the body, but actually in a marsupium, the same way the kangaroos hold their young. Young are released and are carried by a current of water that flows through a fish's mouth through its gills. And then once it's released as young, it probably drops off of the tongue stub and dies, in which case the fish then also dies. While this parasite's ability to replace a fish's tongue is amazing, its discovery and its effects on culture and the media is another interesting topic on its own. My wife and I were in San Carlos Harbor. I was inspecting a fish catch and my wife Heidi said, what's that in the fish's mouth? And I recognized it immediately as being one of these cymatholid isopod parasites. This is Dr. Matt Gilligan. He is a recipient of the Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics and Engineering. But in this case, it really shocked me. The, the parasite was actually looking very much like a tongue. After several months of conversation with Dr. Bruska, Dr. Gilligan and Dr. Bruska published their findings. This was a two page note in an obscure scientific journal. It sat there for years and years. This was the case until Carl Zimmer, a science writer, came along and asked Dr. Gilligan if he could use Dr. Gilligan's photos in his upcoming book, Parasite Rex. That book was so popular, it basically opened the floodgates on every science, let's say, popular science magazine in the globe. This led to more and more media coverage and exposure. Dr. Gilligan showed me several novels and coffee table books that feature the parasite. Of course, you're all probably wondering, is it safe to eat a fish that has had this parasite? Or can I eat this parasite? Well, it turns out you'd be fine. A little surf and turf. However, you probably shouldn't eat them due to their sharp legs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And as always, I am microbially yours.